Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel and if you're new to the channel, well, you picked a great day to pop along because we're on to the A to ZX of the Spectrum, episode 20 and that's the letter T. So if you want to see 5 games from the letter T in the ZX Spectrum era, well you just wait until after these titles. To start off with the letter T, I thought I would go with TLL or Tornado Low Level, released by Vortex Software in 1984. So yes, it's another early game and I like to start with the early games because these were the games that were going to drag me into playing on the ZX Spectrum and avoiding the arcades. And let me tell you, in 1984, Tornado Low Level or TLL was definitely one of those games that made it worthwhile staying at home. Now obviously, looking at it with modern eyes, it doesn't look that special, but remember the time we're in, we're in 19 1984, and in the majority of home gaming systems was still the Atari 2600. Now I'm not showing any disrespect to the Atari 2600, it was a wonderful machine for the time and truly started a new generation of home gamers. But there's absolutely no way that it could have handled a game like TLL. Now the game itself is not overly complicated. You take control of your tornado fighter and you have to destroy 6 targets. And well to do so, there's no fire button as such, no instead what you have to do is fly low level over the target which destroys it. And let me tell you, despite the game not being complicated, it was however quite frustrating. Because being in a jet fighter, well of course you're constantly in motion so you've got to adjust and readjust both height and direction all the time. And let me tell you, that can lead you to flying around a target many many times before you finally move in for that final sweep to take it out. But once this game got its claws into you, well you would play it for hours on end trying to take out those 6 targets. And of course, avoiding all the obstacles that lay in your way such as high rise buildings and electrical pylons and the like. There were other aspects to the game that you had to monitor as well however, such as your fuel. Because obviously if you ran out of fuel, your plane would crash too. And to remedy this, you had to do what I considered and still consider to be the most difficult part of the game, and that is landing your tornado jet back on the airstrip. But it was like every other game back then and every other good game now. If it can frustrate you enough to keep going and going until you finally get it, well that feeling of success is just so much better. And do I recommend anyone playing Tornado Low Level today? Well absolutely because it's a fun little game. So yes, get your hands on a copy of this gameplay whatever way you can and let me know what you thought about it. And that's Tornado Low Level or TLL from Vortex Software in 1984. Second up for the letter T, we're obviously going to be having a look at Sega's Tapper from 1984. Well, it was released in the ZX Spectrum in 1984. You would probably have to be a tad bit older to remember that the game was originally an arcade machine which featured in pubs and clubs and bars. And that original machine was sponsored by none other than the King of Beers Budweiser. Of course, when it moved out of the more adult venues into normal arcades, it had to change the name to Root Beer Tapper. Because heavens forbid they couldn't quite justify promoting alcoholic beverages to minors, could they? On the ZX Spectrum, however, it wasn't Root Beer Tapper, no. It was just Tapper. And the sponsor? Pepsi. Now that upset me back in the day because I was more of an Iron Brew fan. But enough of that nonsense, let's get on to the game itself. And let me tell you, it's quite a simple early arcade game. You play the role of the bartender and your job is to make sure all your thirsty customers are getting their wonderful chilled beverages just as quickly as you can throw them out, but also you have to make sure if they want a refill you catch their glass and throw them another one back. This is early arcade reaction puzzle at its best. The game has various levels and of course it ramps up the difficulty and it would guzzle coin after coin back in the arcades as you tried to memorise the pattern of how many patrons you were having to fire drinks at and which ones were likely to throw them back for a refill. To mix the gameplay up slightly, at the end of each level there was a shell game where a dastardly fiend would furiously shake several cans of Pepsi, leaving only one safe to open. Of course, being a shell game, these cans were all mixed about and you had to watch carefully just to try and remember which can was safe to open. 
Now to be honest I wish it was only three in this particular shell game but there was several cans to keep track of and I don't remember a single time where I didn't duff it in this level. Now of course as I've said this was a simple arcade port and as a simple arcade port it wasn't so much completing the game but it was seeing how far you could get and competing against your friends and family for high scores. But would I recommend anyone playing Tapper now in 2021? Well yes because it's a fun little game. A good old fashioned high score challenge that will keep you and your friends entertained for well at least an hour or so. And of course with Sega behind it, well it was quality for the time too. So of course yes, get yourself out there, find yourself a copy of this game to play and enjoy it for what it is. And that's Tapper from Sega in 1984. For game number 3 in the letter T we're going to have a look at Konami's Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. And yes, you heard me right, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Because over here in the UK, the British Board of Film Classification or the Censors, they decided that ninjas were far too violent for children to be playing with. So they were quickly rebranded Hero Turtles. But that's enough of the history lesson, we're not here for that, we're here to talk about the game itself. And as you can see from the gameplay, well it's a port of the NES game. Now of course, being on the ZX Spectrum it does look a little bit different. And if you ask me, there's some parts of the game that look just a little bit better than the Nintendo version. But of course, I'm probably looking at this game through Spectrum tinted glasses. And back in the day, as far as I was concerned, the Spectrum outperformed everything. Now where it's very much like the NES version, well that's in how difficult this game is to play. And I think to be frankly honest it's even tougher in the ZX Spectrum. And not tougher because the NES version was simpler, tougher because again we're having another example of the, the little micro computer that just couldn't quite do it. The hitboxes were notoriously bad in the NES version and on the ZX Spectrum version well they're just brutal. Where the Spectrum version does stand out however is in the graphics department. No, they're not like modern day graphics, but back there in 1990 these graphics were pretty special. Well, pretty special for a home microcomputer that is. You can definitely make out each of the turtles and it's got a wonderfully colourful background to play against. Well, maybe not so much in the overworld section of the game, but once you get into the sewer, which is the main meat of this game, well, especially in the ZX Spectrum port, it is somewhat of a delight to look at. Of course, the specky being the specky, the sound was, well, awful. But again, that's what we were used to, so that's what we put up with at the time. And it was guaranteed to sell well regardless, because not only was it a port of an NES game, a Nintendo game, it was a Turtles game, and everyone just loved the Turtles back then. But as a game, would I recommend you playing it now in 2021? And then I would say definitely not for this one. I mean, if you're a collector of ZX Spectrum, like myself, or if you're a collector of Turtles, then, then this is an example that you might want in your collection. But if you do want to play this horrible and horribly brutal at times game, then you know what? Dig out the NES version, but just don't tell anyone I told you to do so. And that is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles from Konami in 1990. Our fourth game in the letter T will be Target Renegade from Imagine Software in 1988. And as you can quite simply see, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, or brawler as I like to call them. Now these side-scrolling brawlers weren't quite my cup of tea back in the day, and I think that's mainly because in the arcade machines will be costing an absolute fortune to play. But when you got to take one home to your ZX Spectrum or whatever microcomputer or console you were playing on back in the day, well they became a lot more interesting. Now Target Renegade wasn't one of the big hitters back in the day. Games like Double Dragon, Final Fight, Streets of Rage and even the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtle coin-op machine are the side-scrolling brawlers that people seem to still talk about today. So lots of big important titles and Target Renegade probably wasn't one of them, but for me it was one of the few brawlers that I could actually enjoy playing. And yes, exactly like the other examples of this style of game, it could be played as one player or two player. You could have a buddy sitting beside you as you brawled your way through the hordes of enemies that came your way. Now it's often quite difficult to put your finger directly on what makes one game better than another when it comes to subjective opinions, but for me Target Renegade just played better than the other ports 
of the other games, especially on the ZX Spectrum. For some reason with Target Renegade, I never had any issues with the host of, well let's just call them niggles that the ZX Spectrum often threw up, such as clumsy keyboard controls or colour clash, or even on occasion just trying too hard. So given the choice of Double Dragon or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coin op, I would have picked up Target Renegade any day of the week. For me it was just an example of a game that was very well designed for the system and it played almost flawlessly. So would I recommend someone playing Target Renegade on the ZX Spectrum today? Well absolutely, because as I've said, some games and some ports especially struggled on the ZX Spectrum. But for me this game gets it just right. The perfect balance of gameplay and graphics and wrapped up nicely in a wonderful little game. And that's Target Renegade by Imagine in 1988. Our last game in the letter T is Trash Man from New Generation Software in 1984. Now what exactly can you say about Trash Man? Well, I'll be frankly honest, I don't know what I can say about it. I highly doubt this game has been played by many people, but, but let me tell you, it was one of the games that had me absolutely hooked back in the 80s. Now I'll be frankly honest with you, I have no idea whatsoever how this game managed to hook me in the way it did. All you can say about the gameplay is, well, it's very simplistic. You play the titular trash man, and your job is to go and collect the garbage cans, or the rubbish bins as you would call them in the UK, and take them to what we would call our bin lorry. Now I don't know about you, but I feel that this game is very similar to Paperboy. You're taking on the role of a mundane job, or a fairly mundane job, you're running up a street and you're not making deliveries in this case, but collecting the trash cans and getting rid of your customers' garbage. And I don't know what it was about that era, but you had what Trash Man and Paperboy and Manic Miner. So we had a lot of characters with fairly mundane jobs, but they were involved in games that we all absolutely adored back in the day. Now there was of course a couple of neat little mechanics in this game. Not only did you have to collect the trash cans and empty them into the bin lorry, you had a time limit, oh, the dreaded time limit. But to extend that limit, once you had emptied a trash can, every now and again someone would appear at the door. If you managed to get to that door without stepping on the lorry, on, then you would get a bonus, well a time bonus, along with a funny little pop culture reference, just to spice it up a bit. And also if you stepped on the lawn while you were collecting the trash cans, a dog would chase you, so you would have to get out of that garden ASAP. Now like I said, I can't imagine many people have played this game back in the day, but back in 1984, this is one of my go-to games. So of course I'm going to recommend that you play this game if you get the opportunity, whether you can go out there and pick up a physical copy for yourself, or even just emulate. This game is a wonderful example of what video games were like back in the early 80s, and it's a must play for anyone who has the slightest interest in video game history, and that is Trash Man from New Generation Software in 1984. So there you have it my friends, another 5 games from the ZX Spectrum era, and what do I say every week? Another selection of 8-bit microcomputer masterpieces because they are all masterpieces to me. Now if you want to talk about these games, drop it down in the comments. I do love the interaction between myself and you talking about these games, whether you've played them before, whether you've never played them, or whether you think they should be fired into the sun and forgotten for all eternity. Just drop that down in the comments. Now of course, if you've liked this video, throw me a thumbs up on the way out because one, it's good for the channel, two, it's good for ZX Spectrum and YouTube, and three, well, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And of course, if you want to keep up to date with the videos, subscription button is always there, it's always free, and you can always change your mind. Thank you very much for watching again, and until next time, as always, cheerio!